54 degrees Fahrenheit every single day of the year and every hour of the day. What I'm going to want to see you guys do is make a semicircle, excuse me, around this formation that you see here on your left. Or should I say my left? Okay, so please continue to make that semicircle as you come into the cave. The only thing we need to do is make sure that we make room for any group that happens to come down this ramp you see here. Okay? Because that's how people are going to be exiting in the cave as well. Now, folks, this is the first room that you're standing in that was discovered by the two farmers who found Crystal Cave in 1871. Okay? And I think it's pretty important to remember that they did not intentionally go looking for this cave on that fateful November day. Okay? Instead, they accidentally found this cave. They are taking sticks of dynamite and throwing it in the ground. Okay, now the purpose of that was that they were going to find, hopefully, some limestone. They're going to take that limestone, turn it into lime. Okay, now today, we call this the ice cream cone formation. All right, now, but what we're really looking at, though, is a stalagmite. A stalagmite. And tell the difference between a stalactite and a stalagmite, well, onto the ceiling. Okay? If you want to compare the two, though, both are dripstone formations, which means that they're formed from drops of water, which you might see up here, direct bed above. Okay? So, once those drops eventually settle, they go a few drops. Uh, that's how we get these formations that you see here. For today, a lot actually. But if we can imagine 1870 vertically. But it's specifically here that I get to show you why it's so important that we do not think in the cave today. Now, during that original tour that I mentioned, it would typically last nine hours long. Okay, why you might ask? Well, in addition to having no lights in here, they also had a deal with a foot of mud and rocks on the ground instead of this nice asphalt and concrete. So they come over here and pet this formation for good luck to make sure they would make it out in one piece. After all, some people broke their arms and legs. Okay, so we want to compare how this originally looked when it was first discovered in 1871 to how it looks now in 2021, we can actually look all the way over here. This wee little corner. Okay, so that frozen icing. Or I'm sorry, icing and frozen yogurt appearance. And then we, how it got that way is because all the oils on their hands transferred onto that formation, and that's what deteriorated it. Okay? So point home harder. Now there's one more thing I want to point out, which is right over here. We have a little red light right there. Single wish light that you see like this one is positioned at a low hanging rock. Entering the largest room in the entire cave tour. So I need you guys to start practicing what I mentioned earlier about shoulder to shoulder. Okay, this is going to require you guys to make sure there's enough space for everyone to enter the room. You guys are a smaller group, so it'll be easier for you, but still we need to make sure everyone's able to enter. Okay, now folks, don't know what a root cellar is, then you should know that it's the 19th century version of a refrigerator before the invention of electricity. Okay, so their intention was to store food and crops. In. So instead of preserving food like a good refrigerator, it actually made it go bad three times as fast. Once the farmers realized their horrendous mistake, they very quickly, in a matter of months, sold it up at the formations. <laughs> See the green stuff up there? Oh, yeah. Like so your green beans. Yeah. Use your imagination. I'm going to definite chew in for the first yeah, place ribbon at the only fair 
close by to get that prestigious blue ribbon. As I described it, it's actually a different type of formation than you've seen so far, known as drapery. It only forms when water runs down a crack in the rock surface, such as the ones we see in this massive drop rock here. Okay, we can actually see more. So looking down, folks, I'm sure plenty of you have already noticed I have an ominous red glow at the bottom of the room. Okay, that's not lava. If it were, it'd be a lot hotter in here, and it would probably smell like rotten eggs. Okay, so instead, that's just the light that is lighting up the side passage that runs parallel to the entrance of the cave. And folks, if I'm being honest, it's kind of boring down there. Okay, nothing really going on. We lit it up to let you know not to go down there since no one is uh, qualified on site to rescue you here until winter. <laughs> and follow me. Next room. Oh, this is this is the largest okay, room. You're entering the largest room in the entire cave, so feel free to spread out. I have space going all the uh, way out to the end of that uh, banister there. That is like I also have space over there by the door. Doing a good job. There's more stuff. First time being in a cave, this is crazy. Okay, folks. So, as you're coming into this next room, let's take some time to orient ourselves to where we are. We're now in the, what's called the Crystal Ballroom. And I'll unpack for you later why we call it that. But for now, know that you are 125 feet underneath the Earth's surface. Jeez. This room is also colder at 52 degrees Fahrenheit. If if you were to descend into this new side passage that you can see over here, it would be even colder at one degree less Fahrenheit. Down there, it's called Devil's Den. Why? Well, that's where the bats used to live and we still oh, had bats. Okay? It also oh happens to be the deepest part of the cave you're going to be able to see on the tour today. It will descend to a maximum of 155 meters. Beneath the Earth's surface. Looking from where we came in, you can see this is a massive side, I'm sorry, massive drop rock that was forming that fake ceiling in the last year. Me and Toxic are 100 people underground. This is crazy. Sorry for the lighting because I barely have any lights in here. So. I think we can agree that that's a really terrible earthquake, ridiculously so, we might add. Uh, for Pennsylvania standards, considering the, the last, we call this the Crystal Ballroom. Okay? When the original, and guess what? Those owners had dollar signs on their eyeballs, like Looney Tunes characters. Okay? They wanted to make it rich. It's a shimmering effect that you see now. See what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And they said, aha! We found some folks, they took the sample down to the jeweler and put Those are actual diamonds. And they wanted to know how many millions of dollars they're going to be able to make. Okay? Diamonds! The jeweler poured water on the sample to get a very look. Guess what? The entire sample dissolved. Rip. So, are these diamonds? No. No, oh, good. The calcite crystals. And the only reason we can see them here is because we have a lovely ledge right above that protects the calcite crystals from water dropping on them. Okay? Otherwise, they would all spread. Still, these types of crystals that we see right over here. And they said, aha! We found our diamond after all. This has to be the world's largest diamond. And they were even more excited. Kind of out of their mind when the sample they gave the jeweler did not dissolve. But folks, the jeweler told them that their sample was worth only as much as table salt. Okay? And you can actually pretty affordably buy a regular. Okay? They're both formed from calcium. The really, the only difference between the two is that this 
Uh, right behind here is uh, only a laboratory. But even before then, the space was used as a place to have parties. Okay? After this, we did not go home from such an experience. And so you bought your tickets. So they had some time. Right. Nice set up for a uh, kind of band to play uh, musical instruments for music, pencil etchings, yeah. for snacks and drinks. For the people here, and they were dressed in their Sunday best. Okay? Now, by 1917, there was a record of three weddings Sorry. and three baptisms that occur right here in the cave. Okay, for all those ceremonies, I want an altarpiece for all of them. I'm um, sorry, all the ceremonies. And it was actually stolen from fur back in the cave and defeated. So that's why we see this discoloration on the formation. And folks, now we can go up to the next spot on the floor. Okay, please remember to look out for the wish light and yellow sign when you get to the top of the stairs. Oh my god, look at that. What is this? Oh my god. Oh dog 25 gaming is gonna love this. So this is gonna be a little, excuse me, a little tired here as well. I have some space on the other side of the railing here you guys can use. You guys look down here by the way, you can see where the original tour had to go before we turn in the concrete. All this is handmade. Now this is, okay, it predates the Pell for earthquake in the last room, making it more than half a million years old. Order in the entire cave, Lake Inferior, which I apologize for the light, but it is right over here. See it? Okay. So looking over here at Castle Rock, you can see a dead stalagmite formation. It's like heights that help form it. And it illustrates my point that I was talking about earlier because it's here you can see the inside center of a stalagmite or yoke to continue the metaphor. Okay? So uh, it's that inside center that will decay if it's not being fed by a drip drop of water from a stalactite. So that's why we say a pure castle rock is going to become hollow from the inside out. Okay, now looking back down at fried eggs, down here, that from with your hands, feet, fingers, arms, maybe not your mouth. Thank you. Was you're taking turns touching the metal bridge that has a sinister reputation. Uh, people have been two and a half weeks ago, a tour guide dropped a laser pointer down there. Okay, so it does happen. All right, please follow me. Alright, make sure you hold on to that tightly and make sure you're connecting your body. I know, I know. This 
This is really scary, guys. <laughs> My viewers on my channel, I am not dead. Oh, Hopefully, I, I do not die here. Well, the handrails are here for stabilizing, right? You know what I mean? Like, you want, you need to just like stabilize yourself, like just use the hand. I'm like 150 feet below ground. Okay. So you've already done. Ooh. It's unique, not just for the system of light lights that we have, not just. Some type of uh, seed coral that we've stapled onto the formation. So the water made it all the way up there. All right. Now this entire formation rests. Uh, if you were to lift it up and down. Okay. Now this that also contributed to it falling in the first place. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Good question. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This staircase. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No? Barely any room. Yeah, Tyler, please. This is another shoulder to shoulder location, so I'm going to need to back around all the way around the banister and then come to my side. Yep, good job. It's so close to this rock right there. Okay, now folks, we're going to start sharing this gallery with the nerd group. So I am going to uh, start dropping my volume, and I'm going to need you guys to start homing in on my voice. Okay, so I think very easily see two thirds of the cave, right? Okay, that's looking down, but look for two limited Move over a little bit. <laughs> Is show is displaying for you kind of this fifty to one hundred year old uh, constellation of stalactites. Okay, this uh, constellation of stalactites happened to be at uh, the youngest formation in the entire cave. Okay, you've made it to the back of the cave. You cannot go any further. You've now ascended to only do 60 feet. I know that uh, this is the wettest and warmest right part of the cave at uh, about 56 as you descend. Because they're the youngest formations. So that's the youngest formations. Can I please move up to the camera? Why? Can't help me at all. This one up there. You just said it looks like a beehive. This formation over here is very controversial. Okay. Now, in some countries, you'll know what this is, but we interpret it. Sometimes I'll just say it might be a man, or a dragon, or a bison, or a wolf. I see crystals like that. Now, we need to remember. Okay, now this is the crystal cave scene. So we're going to be spending some time looking for animals in here. And they're all going to be over here on this crystal cave. Okay, so we're going to the easiest that happens to be south of the seal. Right over here. You see south of the seal? That's the easiest. We're going to be able to use the very So next, it's going to be shoveling down.
now we're going lower underground. Probably a hundred feet below ground now. More than that. No, like a hundred fifty something. Yeah. And the Antarctic are in a cave. Oh wait, we've been in this room. But here it is again. I'm gonna go down there. Devil's Den. That's where the bats were, right? Devil's Den. Devil's Den. Devil's Den. Devil's Den. My head is so close to the rocks above me. I want to go there. No, we're going up. like this is a tour guide's title. They, they do. Okay. Well, then you go find them and you enjoy it. You have to be a professional. Yep. Well, until you become a professional, this is what we're doing. Now. Guys? Yeah. All right. If you uh, look around, we're going to talk about four quick with the ear corn uh, slide type formation all the way up here in the ceiling. Happens to be okay. There's Snoopy. Information. It's the star okay. destroyer You're made out of rock. No, uh, it's the giant triangle. It's the average temperature 54 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. But I'd be happy to answer them once we get to the exit. Speaking of which. We need to remember to stay to the left. We are moving again. Ice cream. The cave is pretty small, but it's still cool to be in. Um, so yeah, this is... Um, we are leaving the cave. I went pretty far underground today. Uh, since I went far underground today, and I didn't die, so Panda Player YouTube is out of a cave alive. It's the outside world.